Hey, hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, we are back. This time it's another one of those humongous entertainment games by Fox. Got any milk? Not anymore. I think it has a bigger wuss than the ticks around it. Everything is going just as I planned. Soon the entire world will be without dairy milk. Just call it milk. No butter on toast, no ice cream, no cheddar cheese, and nothing but dry cereal. Kill him. Nothing can stop me now. <laughs> I don't think you need to put as he tosses his head back in somewhere some over the Mediterranean oh. Sea. Spy Fox in dry cereal. Would you like our Italian entree, sir? No, thanks. It gives me hives. Our vegetarian dinner, then? No, gives me the vapors. Then, may I recommend the Greek plate? It's delicious. All right, if you insist. Enjoy. <laughs> All right. It's good to see you, Agent Fox. Ah, Monkey Penny. Monkey now this Penny. is a real TV dinner. Right. Miss Money Yesterday, Penny, our spy Penny. operatives discovered the factories and offices of Amalgamated New Juice Incorporated abandoned and drained of milk. Soon, the entire world's remaining milk reserves will be depleted. The idea of eating dry breakfast cereal is pretty hard to swallow. Yes, it is. Here's the only clue we have. Feta cheese, a low grade too. Spy operatives took that picture in the office of Mr. Howard Hugh Heffer Udley III. President Ooh, and CEO of Amalgamated Moor <coughs> Juice Incorporated. Exactly. We presume he has valuable information on the dairy crisis. The only available picture of him is hidden in your mashed potatoes. Finding Udderly is your top priority. He shouldn't be hard to spot. The feta cheese samples spot? found in Udderly's office have been traced back to the island of Acidophilus. Your plane will be flying over the island any minute now. I've already set up the mobile command center where you will rendezvous with me and later on with Quack. The entrance code is in your fortune cookie. Any questions? No, I'm on my way. Good, monkey penny out. Why is there a fortune cookie in a big dinner? Why did the emergency bag breathing things drop? Oh well, I'm questioning too much. Spy Fox in dry cereal. I'm told this guy puns I more wish than I, I hadn't do. left my parachute in my other tuxedo. Maybe one of my special spy gadgets will help me. Uh, I wonder which one I should pick. Boom. Chosen at random. That's not how gravity works. I've always work. wanted to try that. It puts a little bounce into your day. Hmm. So this is the sleepy little Greek island of Acidophilus. I seem to have arrived unfashionably early, as nothing seems to be open. I should meet up with Monkey Penny at the mobile command center. Okay. There we go. Here's That's... where I keep my spy gadgets. I thought I had four spy pens. What, what'd you do? Throw Here's where away? my notes go. I use the speech bubbles to gather information. Good for you. Five 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 six two two zero. How fortunate that Monkey Penny gave me this entrance code. Should have been eight six seven five three zero oh, nine. And then this is a picture of a cow's butt. It's a photograph of Mr. Udderly. No, it's a photo of his butt. It says Greek Cantina. It says Happy Hour nine to eleven. It says Trinkets. Just gonna read everything off. You want to see my tattoo? No, I don't want... That's creepy. Your mother must be so proud. Yeah, I know. Pie in the face. Okay. Bump. Sink. All right, how many of these you got, buddy? They seem to a lot of them seem to fall apart. Wanna see my tattoo? Okay, I'm done now. No more of that ever.
Unlike Pajama Sam, this one doesn't seem to have a lot of weird crap going on when I click. Oh, no mind it does. What's coming out? What's coming out? A rock or a marble or something. Wait, what was wait, 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 what what? Jesus. Cow. Tuna. Box of fish. Uh-oh. Normally I would karate chop my way right through a door, but this one seems to be made of solid steel. He almost sounds like he's doing a Don Adams slash Maxwell Smart impression. Almost, but not close enough that I can say for sure whether or not he is. I forgot the code. Five 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 six two two zero. Hello, Spike Hall Mobile Command Center. Penny, I've got your number. It's on the wall. Penny, I got your number. Penny, it's in the cookie. Doesn't work as well. Now that's a person-to-person -person phone call. Glad you could drop in, Spy no, Fox. Fox. Hello, Monkey. That's Monkey Penny. So, what do you think of Spy Corps' new Greek Island Mobile Command Center? Impressive. Disguising it as a half-buried boat in the middle of the town square was a stroke of genius. Nobody stroke would ever notice that. That was Professor Quack's idea. Where is Quack? Oh, he'll be here soon to refill the spy gadget dispensing machine. In the meantime, he sent a couple of things ahead for your mission. Good, because a spy without a gadget is like a shopping trolley without a broken wheel. How apt. Now, pay attention. This is Greek money. It's called drachmas. You may need to buy a few things around here on the island. And this mm. is a... A toothbrush. And I could certainly do with one after that airplane meal. You didn't eat it. Don't put that in your mouth. It's not a normal toothbrush. It's a special laser toothbrush. Let me show you how it works. You hold the laser toothbrush, apply the minty fresh laser gel, push the button, then you can use it to cut through really thick steel. Hmm. I suppose that's one way to fight cavities. So, do we have any idea where Mr. Udderly is being held? No solid evidence yet, but you might want to check out that feta factory down by the docks. Feta factory, hey? I thought I smelled something suspicious. All right, so we've got the Rakma. Monkey Penny, do you think my white tuxedo is too formal for Greece? Spy Fox, don't you have better things to do than to hang around here and stare at your reflection in the monitors? Hey. Bugs. You know, some people say life is like an empty distributing machine. You put in your penny, and all you get is a whole lot of nothing. Gosh, you're in a depressing mood today, aren't you? Mom always said life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna do. What did that do? Oh, he was just delayed. Hey, say something. Monkey hard. Penny, did I ever tell you about the time the demented Dr. Gemini created a clone of me? and I had to stop myself from beating myself up. I wish you'd get a grip on yourself and get going on this rescue mission. Get a hold of yourself, ugh. Oh, Spy Fox, you're going to be busy on this rescue mission. Should I call the Spy Academy and tell them to cancel the weapons class you were going to teach? What? You're going to tell them that Spy Fox doesn't have class? They'll never believe you. Leave the puns to me, please. Uh, bloop, bloop, My bloop. spy watch is beeping. Bloop. Spy Fox to Mobile Command Center. Please stand by. Spy Fox here. Hello, Spy Fox. Remember, you can call me via your spy watch anytime for help and information. Just press the Mobile Command button. 
We'll do. Spy Fox out. All right. Okay, so I can pull it up at any time. Fun? fun. It's happy fun happy sound. Fun A little sound. break from the spy biz might do me some good. Mini game of some kind? Tattoo? You want to see my tattoo? Oh, back to that one. All right. The door's locked. That's a shame. Well, at least I know what I'm supposed to laser through. Is there a big old bite taken out of the dock over here? Ooh, woodworms. At least I don't have to bring them wood this time. Alright. Where's my laser? Ah. There we go. Wasteful. And also, you don't squeeze from the middle of the tube, dude. What the hell is wrong with you? Excuse me. Unnecessarily. The laser toothbrush makes impenetrable steel doors penetrable. Does that make you a pervert? Mm. Hey, that butt looks familiar. Now that's a big side of beef. No buts about it. That's Mr. Udderly, all right. And he's dangling over a pool of piranha. Now the question is, how am I going to get his rump roast down from there? In a world where the cows can talk. This must be very embarrassing for you. Hang in there. It bothers me that you know what beef is. What is that? Cheese? Pie? Cheese? With a mouse in it? Have a bottle with a glove on it? Dynamity? Turkey the toaster? And that's the cheese guy. Hmm. This must be the temperature control for this pool of piranhas. Ooh. It's a very odd fixture for a feta cheese factory. Piranha the piranha pool Ooh. seems to be getting hotter. Ooh. The piranha that jumped out her nose looking a little uncomfortable. The piranha pool can't get any hotter. The piranhas are already sweating, if that's possible. Nope, fish don't sweat. That makes the piranha pool colder. Okay. Come on. You're making me do this too much. The little beasties seem to be slowing down. Works for me. Hmm, fish on ice. That should hold them. Now for Mr. Udderly. Oh, there we go. I thought it was going to be automatic for some reason. You know, don't lower him that fast. You're lucky you didn't break through the ice. What? Uh, he's got a spoon. Because it'll hurt more. You saved me! Thank you, Mr. Fox. Spy Fox. Routine rescue, really. Now I need to get you to our mobile command center for a debriefing. Good! I need to change my trousers. I don't want your briefs. You've got to stop him, Mr. Fox! All right. Just calm down, Mr. Udderly. Why don't you start from the beginning and tell us what happened? It all started as a typical day at the office. 
When you're as important as I am, you're constantly fielding international cattle calls, reviewing grazing reports. Wasteful. Yes, you Very have wasteful. to stay pretty sharp in the dairy business. What the hell is going on in that? So, when William the Kid's thugs made their appearance, I immediately snapped into action. There were dozens of them. I fought them. Hoof and nail. Pow, 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 pow. My whole body is a weapon. Then, suddenly, I smelled something revolting. It could only be one thing. Feta cheese. The stink was so overwhelming that I nearly passed out. Taking advantage of my momentary asphyxiation, kidnappers jumped me, Kids then forced me into a smelly dark bag. They whisked me away to Kid's secret island fortress. It was just so humiliating being bagged up like a side of beef. But were you able to learn anything about what William the Kid is up to? Well, thanks to a little bovine ingenuity on my part, I was able to pick a few things up. Kid's demented scheme for gaining worldwide domination is run by a front company called Nectar of the Goats Corporation. He has a five-part master plan. First, Capture all the dairy cows in the world. In the world? As you know, he's already done that. Second, he built a milky weapon of destruction inside his secret milky fortress. Weapon. Third, use the milky weapon of destruction to flood the capital with none too fresh dairy milk. Fourth, frame all the poor dairy cows for his heinous crime. Fifth, Take over the entire dairy world! Spy Fox, someone needs to find that secret fortress and disarm that milky weapon of destruction. Hmm, sounds challenging. I need to find that secret fortress and disarm that milky weapon of destruction. Oh, I almost forgot. When William the Kid's back was turned, I swiped the secret code that turns the milky weapon of destruction off. Good going. Where is it? Oh, uh, well, I had to swallow the code before I could read it so it wouldn't be discovered. Can you believe it? I find the whole thing a little hard to swallow. We need to figure out a way to get a look at that code. Give Someone needs knife. to find that secret fortress and stop William the Kid. And that duck is their version of Q. Good Quack. morning, Spy Fox. I took the liberty of loading the dispensing machine with some of my ingenious new spy gadgets. You should take a look at some of them, Spy Fox. They may come in handy. Why don't you just give them to me like a normal spy operative guy? X-ray gum. How does this work, Professor Quack? That's my new and improved beef-flavored X-ray gum. I'll explain how it works. You take a stick out, put it up against something beefy, move it around, and then you can see the yucky stuff inside. The best part of all is, when you're done, you can chew the gum. It actually has a very refreshing beefy flavor. You know, four out of five dentists prefer x-ray gum for their patients who need x-rays. How uh, disgusting and oddly... A duck needs his specific. spy back. Did you just eat the blueprints? What's in this egg-shaped container, Professor Quack? This is a little gadget I call the spy putty. Okay. What you do is open the cute little egg container and spread the putty on whatever you want to make a copy of. Press down and then peel the putty off. You have a perfect so copy. Funny. Hmm, that looks rather silly. I know what you're thinking. You think 
that the spy putty looks a lot like that silly stuff they sell in toy stores. What you don't know is that I thought of it first. You're weird. <laughs> oh, those duplicitous duplicators stole my idea. Sure they did. That's the spy putty. All right. It appears to be a shoe. Yep. What is shoe this phone? gadget, Professor Quack? That's the night vision shoe. Ah. Oh, one of my most ingenious inventions. <laughs> so your feet can see in the dark? If you happen to find yourself in a dark place, all you do is strap this shoe onto your head, and then you can see in the dark. How illuminating. Nightmarishly stupid. Yes. And it has excellent arch support. I'm guessing there's more stuff in the machine that I can take with me. Mmm, it looks like a delicious snack. May I eat this, Professor Quack? Okay, that's the cheese and safe cracker kit. Cheese and safe cracker. It will help you get into almost any safe in the world. I won't explain exactly how it works. Because it's very scientific and complicated, trust me, when I say it works like a charm. And it tastes great in soup. <laughs> nah, and this paper isn't half bad. Alright. That's the cheese and safe cracker. I have room for one more. How many are there? There's two more. I'll wait until I have need of whatever they Is are. Is this I coin think. really a spy gadget, Professor Quack? Ah, that's the spy trap. <laughs> Let me explain how it works. It looks like an ordinary coin, like you might find in the street. But if you need to trap three or more bad guys, the coin explodes and a net shoots out. It traps the naughty spy enemies. You're really nice. killing the cool spy Heads I win, tails they lose. Oh, I'm gonna lose my appetite if I keep this up. Yeah, well, it's a stupid thing to do in the first place. What handsome cufflinks. Are they a gadget as well, Professor Quack? It's pretty obvious Those they are. are the suction cufflinks. <sighs> Excuse me. I am very proud of them. They are tiny suction cups that allow you to climb across non-porous metal surfaces. The perfect fashion accessory for the well-dressed spy. So for wall climbing. Mm, that was a tasty like one. Spider-Man Fox to you. Alright. How are the car repairs going? Oh, I'm still waiting for the ejection seat I ordered to arrive. You know, if I took the Asti Spumoni, I could be getting much better mileage. And what's wrong with walking? Don't you care about the environment? Oh, you spies are getting way too dependent on these gadgets. I don't need that crap from the guy that supplies the gadgets. Oh well. Okay, shop is open. Hello, Mr. Bunny. Welcome to the Trinket Emporium. My name is Gilbert. How may I be of service to you? Oh, honorable visitor to this, our dear island home. I'm not sure yet. I was just noticing your fine selection of trinkets. Sir, I think that you will find we offer much more than mere trinkets. We pride ourselves in having the island's finest selection of rare and hard-to-find collector items and antiquities. Excellent. Like one never knows when one will be struck with an unquenchable desire to indulge in a blatant act of bourgeois consumerism. Our thoughts exactly, sir. All right. Jar of trinkets. I like the jar of trinkets, but I'm wondering if you have them in cans. It's uncanny that you would ask me that, because just this morning I ordered some. Unfortunately, they won't be here till next week. Oh, well then, I'll just stand here and wait. What could anyone possibly do with a whole jar of trinkets? Oh, it could be a paperweight. You could make a unique lamp out of it. It could be turned on its side to roll out pastry. 
There must be a million and one uses. Good to know. So what's a jar of trinkets going for these days? Normally, sir, they're 20 drachmas. But for you, how about 50? Sounds good to me. I'll take it. That wasn't a good deal. There you go, sir. Why, thank you. Sailor hat. What do you get when you throw a white sailor's hat into the Red Sea? A wet hat. Yep, old joke. Aren't those conical, brimless hats called fezzes? Uh, if you say so. I've always thought of them as those funny-looking hats worn by old gentlemen driving those small cars in parades. That voice sounds so dang familiar. Do you have any bigger fish? You should have seen the one that got away. A ship's wheel like this is a very unique belly button antique. A what? Belly button? Oh, I mean navel. Yeah, okay, I should have realized that. Ooh, water clock. I like water clocks. Could you tell me a little about those pennants? Yes, those are actual pennants waved by Emperor Theodosius himself at the 393 AD Olympics. Did you go to the stinky school of lying and BS? You know, Professor Quack could probably use that ship's wheel in one of his inventions. Sir, I would steer clear of giving this sort of thing as a gift. Enough of that nautical talk. I'll... hold on. I'll take it. <clears throat> I'll take it. My life needs a little direction right now. I think I'll buy that steering wheel. Let me wrap that up for you. Holy <sighs> crap, he's tiny. Oh. He's an itty bitty bunny. Ah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> this is both ah. pathetic and hilarious. Ah. <laughs> oh, forget it. Sorry, the wheel's not for sale. You're welcome to come here to look at it whenever you'd like. Gosh, thanks. Tell me, do you happen to have any white marble cycladic figurines? From either Siphonos or Syros, dating somewhere between 2800 to 2300 BC. I have no idea what you're talking about, sir. Perhaps there's something else I could interest you in. So I'm guessing I can only buy what's in... What's within short shorty shorts reach? How much for one of those pennants? They're quite rare. They cost seven million drachmas. Do you have seven million drachmas? Not on me. Then it does not look as though you will be buying one. Fine. You don't sound like him, but you kind of remind me of the comic book guy from Simpsons. There's no telling when I might need one of these hats. You better give me 40 of them. 40? But I only have one left. All right. I'll take one of them. Good. I hope you and your little hat will be happy together. So happy together. Nobody but you for all my life. Have a good day. I think that's everything he could actually reach, other than the penance. Greek cantina. At the Greek. Cantina. Do, 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 do. Little dog over here. Excuse me, are you the owner of this boat? I'm James T. Drydock, captain of the SS Winner Prize. Pleased to meet you. My name is Fox. Impression. Spy Fox. Is this William rickety Chapman. old boat of yours seaworthy? 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 Of course she's seaworthy. The question is not whether she's seaworthy, matey, but rather whether you're worthy of the sea. I see. All right. So, how are the fish biting today, Captain? Same way they usually do. They use their jaw muscles to push <laughs> their teeth together. I'm stealing that one. I am totally stealing that one. I swear to God. So, Captain, do you think you could take me out for a little boat ride? I'd love to, but there's just one problem. 
I can't go anywhere without my lucky charm. Your lucky charm? I the pink mate. heart, orange star, yellow moon, green clover, blue because diamond, or that a there horseshoe. is the sea, the a final moon. frontier. And on my voyages in the SS Winner Prize, on a 25-year mission to seek out new sea life and new civilizations, yep, I boldly went where no raccoon oh, had gone before. Raccoon. Duh, tail. But well, I couldn't without see the tail, my lucky so. charm, it would be way too risky. <clears throat> I can't chance it. Okay, fine. I so can I gather information about Captain Drydock and his lucky charm with this. Some kind of weasel? That's quite a nice little toy boat you've got there. Is it yours? Oui, monsieur. And that is why I'm standing out here at this podium on this filthy, seagull-stained dock, talking to sophisticated wannabes like you. So it's not your boat? No. It belongs to my boss. Who is your boss? So what is it you do here? I am what monsieur might call a glorified doorman. But I prefer to think of myself as the charming an all-powerful gatekeeper. Looks like a pretty fancy yacht. Fancy would be an understatement, monsieur. Unfathomably luxurious. Might be a closer description. Okay, fine. Pardon, monsieur, but just where do you think you are going? On board. <laughs> monsieur is obviously making a little joke. No one, but no one, is allowed on board the SS Deadweight without a gold-edged, wax-sealed, expensively embossed, handwritten invitation. And do you have one of these, monsieur? Not as such. Then I'm afraid, monsieur, that you should make like a plane in the Bermuda Triangle and get lost. I can gather information about the deck party with this. Bermuda Triangle's been proven to be BS. All right, I'm going to go ahead and call it here. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please like, comment, or subscribe. Or not. I'm not the boss of you. Good night, everybody.